Welcome to Uncopyable Women in Sales. If you're looking for actionable insights and real world tools to turbocharge your sales starting tomorrow, well, you're in the right place. Your host, Kay Miller, earned the affectionate nickname Muffler Mama when she sold more automotive mufflers than anyone else in the world. In this podcast, Kay will talk to another superstar woman in sales as they reveal uncopyable strategies you can use to rack up more leads, snag dream clients, and take your sales numbers through the roof. Stay tuned and get ready to make more sales. And how about this? More money. Today's guest is a friend of mine, and I promise you're in for a real treat. Patricia Fripp is truly one of my heroes. She's a Hall of Fame keynote speaker, award-winning speech writer, author, and in-demand speech coach. Companies hire Patricia to help them drive more business through sales presentations and conversations. Her virtual program, Fripp VT, is considered the best online learning platform that teaches presentation skills. Patricia, welcome to the podcast. Always fun to talk to you. Patricia, you are just the best. I met you through my husband, Steve, the infamous Steve Miller. Um, I was attending a National Speakers Association convention, and you and Steve had already connected and become friends. In fact, when I told him that you were going to be on my podcast, he said, she's one of my favorite people on the planet. What a wise husband you have. Isn't he smart? I know. That's why I keep him around, right? Patricia, I could literally spend the entire 30 minutes talking about your accomplishments, your accolades, but I don't want to talk. I want to listen. And I want you to help me and my listeners improve our presentation skills and make more sales. Yay. So I will start by asking you, why is it important for a sales professional to be a confident speaker? Because they will drive more sales. However, let me begin with my rant. It drives me absolutely crazy that companies with plenty of resources, they invest a fortune recruiting the best possible sales professionals in their industry. They teach them territory management, uh, prospecting, how to manage this sales force. They teach them all about our company and our products and often how we sell against our competitors. And then they say, go out and talk to the C-suite. And they invest no time and none of their resources on when you are lucky enough to get an appointment. What is it you say? Boy, that's very ironic, right? That, that, that huge piece of the puzzle gets missed. Well, Almost without exception, when I work with a new company, one of the key areas they say, we have no consistency in our message. So that is why I would encourage all sales professionals, if they are not the sales manager, they perfect their skills and perhaps even say to the sales manager, I would like to learn from the most seasoned and the most successful. And then, whether you get buy-in or not, you want to be, one, confident. I say to my sales manager, I don't care if someone's been with your company 10 or 20 years or someone has been with you for three months. Imagine you have the best prospect that you've been working on for a couple of years and suddenly the only person who can fit in to that great prospect schedule is the person who is the newest on the team. You need the confidence that everyone is equally good. So one, you will drive more sales. Two, 
if you know what you are saying, why it works, and you deliver that well, that builds confidence in the person you're talking to. If two companies have a product or a service that is is the same reputation, probably similar products or services, and the price difference is inconsequential, the presentation makes the difference. So that's interesting. So your confidence inspires their confidence. It, it's transferable. It's like enthusiasm is contagious, right? So tell me, how do you build the confidence? It sounds like by being prepared and knowing what you're doing, you'll be much more confident. What would you recommend for people uh, who want to build that confidence? Security is knowing your lines. That's an old showbiz adage, and that's true. The first piece of advice I'd give to everyone who is developing their skills is understand the old-fashioned way of structuring a presentation is not valid in this work. If you think the early days, the typical sales process, the, the presentation was, this is who we are, this is what we do, this is how long we've been in business, this is our unique methodology or our proprietary software, and this is who we serve, and we'd love to add you to our list to satisfy clients. Nobody cares. Rule one, and this is a fripicism, and I work on one premise, and I teach this premise. If you realize everybody else is more interested in themselves than they are in you, you will never go wrong. And that means... Focus your conversation and formal presentation on the prospect, not on you. We all know the statistics that if you are lucky enough, especially if you have a pretty large investment product, that if you are lucky enough to get an appointment with a decision maker or certainly the highest recommender in a company, mm. you have already been researched and compared to several other companies. So you might be one in three or one of four. And that's when the presentation makes the difference. And always focus on the company. So for example, if you were getting to the point where you have a formal presentation, you will have talked to other people preparing you to talk to the senior people. And this is what I reckon, recommend you do with your structure. The opening is important. And I recommend your first word should be congratulations. Congratulations, okay. So you're talking about them, not you. Uh, yes, and then you <laughs> congratulate them on an area that they can be proud. It could be as, congratulations, I noticed your stock price has just gone up two points and your major competitor has gone down three. That means your strategies are sound or you make good decisions. It could be, congratulations, your latest advertising campaign is spectacular. Or congratulations, every single person I met walking to the conference room said good morning, smiled, asked if I, can, if I need any help or directions. Obviously, your core values are alive and well. It could be that simple. It could be congratulations for realizing as well as you are doing, there are several opportunities in your marketing that could be improved. Wow, a lot of so, you and your, I love that. Exactly, because you is the magic word. You is, you the, is magic the magic word. word. So one, it's congratulations. And then a fripicism is, if you sound the same as everybody else, you have no advantage. So then, so congratulations, and then 
Thank you for the opportunity to discuss. Now, most people say thank you for your time. No, everybody does that. Thank <laughs> you for the opportunity to discuss. If the FRIP training approach is the solution you've been looking for, the opportunity to discuss, then, assuming that you were prepared, you might say, uh, thank you for to John and Mary for their generosity in time and information. You can thank them for their time, not in that situation, because thank you for their time and information preparing me for this meeting. And they tell me your biggest challenges are, your greatest opportunities are, or what you are interested in hearing. So whatever is the appropriate word, is it interest, is it opportunity, is it challenge? Then you structure your presentation. No, this is who we are, this is what we've done more. This is challenge one, this is challenge two, this is challenge three. And you can certainly, as you're going, so challenge number one is, and you can feel confident that based on our 40 year company experience, it doesn't say you've worked there 40 years, <laughs> but based on our 40 year company experience, we have helped clients of your size and complexity for decades. Now, and then as you go through their challenges, you give examples, you build your experience, like based on 40 years experience. And then if you were to talk to John, the president of the ABC company, he would tell you. So you're building within your chunks of content. It's probably what you were doing now will be in there. However, it will be focused on what interests them. And then towards the end, you do a review based on your premise. Now, a premise, Kay, as you know with a speech, every speech has a premise, a big idea, a central theme. And the unspoken premise of a sales presentation is your company will be better off when you do business with our company than our competition. And your content. Your talking points have to prove your premise. Now, you don't say my premise is you'll be better <laughs> off. You say thank you for the opportunity to discuss if the ABC company is the solution you're looking for. Got to so finesse that do, a little bit. <laughs> yeah. So when you do your review, so is the FRIP sales presentation training the best option for you? Now, you go back and then you do a review. And what you could say is if you're talking to a group that's then talking to a big, bigger group, you say, and, and when you're discussing our conversation, even though it's been a formal presentation, please tell your senior leadership, ba 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 the approach we would take to solve this challenge is this and this and this. You do a review and then say, what are the questions you need me to answer? And then, again, again, thank you. On behalf of our leadership and 336 associates, thank you for the opportunity to be considered as your there. If this makes sense, our next logical step is. So the next logical step. Is it to do a demo? Is it whatever it is, is just logical. Uh, and you actually, you'll do that. And then you'd say, thank you for the opportunity on behalf of the entire company. Thank you. And then just as you you would think you finished. You do your last words linger. Your last words linger are the number one most important benefit or reason to do business with you. And if they were going to tattoo one phrase on their wrist, this would be it. Now, real life examples with one of my clients who was the big player in the industry. Uh, they said, remember, 
154 profitable quarters. In other words, yeah, we're a bit slower. Yes, we're bigger. <laughs> It'll take longer to get decision, but we are never going out of business. Doesn't matter but ultimately, right? Yes. Think long term. Yeah. So then with another company I worked with, their PS close was, remember, 99% of the Fortune 100 do business with us. Now, if you have a smaller company that's competing against the 154 profitable quarters, you say, remember, we are large enough to satisfy all your needs, small enough that you will always be a VIP client and have the president's cell phone available 24-7. Wow. And I, I love that. Words that linger and then you take whatever advantage you have and you boil it down into a tidy little package that's so small you could tattoo it on your wrist. Yes. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> And uh, you know, I also like the way that that you are so gracious throughout this process with the customer. And that makes so much sense, but I think it's overlooked by a lot of salespeople. And yeah, I've worked with one client in particular. I remember after we worked together, he took all the beginning slides out about his company, why they're so great, all those statistics, like you said, all the things that they don't care about. They want to know what you can do for them. So. The, well, those are what really... you do, Kay, is you take the essence of those slides and tie it in when you're talking about them. And then you say, it might interest you to know that 36% of our clients told us within three months they had a return on their investment. So you start with them and reinforce. You are reinforcing why they are better off to choose your company rather than the others. Today's podcast is sponsored by the acclaimed book, Uncopyable Sales Secrets, How to Create an Unfair Advantage and Outsell Your Competition by Kay Miller. If you want to make more sales, you need to read this book. We'll even get you started with a free download of the first two chapters. Go to uncopyablesales.com slash chapters to grab this offer right now. That's great because like you said, sometimes there isn't a whole lot of difference in the actual deliverable, but you are the package. You are part of the uncopyable package. And even if your product or service is copyable, you certainly aren't. And Patricia, you are personally such a great example of that. And for those not uh, watching, or even if you are, she's a compact little powerful package, <laughs> very, very big presence. And just somebody who, when you walk into a room, you really do light up the room and you exude confidence and it builds confidence in others. So I think that's what we all aspire to. Um, I love the way that you talk about opening the conversation by congratulating them on something that they can be proud of. That is a wonderful way to start right out of the box, making them the focus. One thing that I love about you and your speaking, and the first time I heard you, I was mesmerized, is your storytelling. So tell us a little bit about how we can select the stories we tell and maybe tell them a little bit better. Good. For sales professionals, we need to have an arsenal of stories prepared in our back pocket. Now, by the back pocket, it means you have these ready for the opportunity that you know this is the right time to tell this story. So, for example, if you are talking to somebody from a large company, you might want to give examples. Well, this from a Fortune 500 company. If you're talking to a medium sized business, then you want an example from a medium sized business because what we do with our happy client stories is we bring them in. When we're talking about a certain talking point, this is how it worked with the ABC company. And just like you, they're in the technology space and have the same amount of employees and customers that you do. 
And our three-step process worked very well for them and it'll work for you. But when you tell the story, and this is what I call, you take your satisfied customers with you on your sales calls. So you look at who, who's given you quotes on your website. If, and we all, Kay, have clients and they say, well, this sounds good. Could I talk to three of your clients that you've given this service to? Right. Those three people, the ones that immediately come to mind are where you begin. And the story formula is situation, solution, success. And my sales clients laugh hysterically at this because <laughs> stories have to be true. They do not have to be 100% accurate because what stories do is shrink time. And we know by the time we get a formal presentation, that might be months with some people. It's a year before you get there. And right. what we have to do is shrink time. So imagine, now this is where it's true, it's not 100% accurate. A few years ago, one of my friends called and said, Patricia, help. As you know, I'm a great salesperson one-on-one. -on -one. However, I have the opportunity to speak for a conference committee who's considering bringing their conference to our hotel is worth half a million dollars to, to our hotel, and I'm terrified. Now, what he did, he said help and clearly articulated his problem. Now, that is not how this always goes. So imagine you take your satisfied client or customer and imagine they picked up the phone and said, K, help, and clearly articulated their problem. That is the situation and that is always in the happy customer's words before they were happy customers. The solution is when you speak. So what we did for the ABC company would work very well for you. We went through our three-step process, da, 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 da. And when I first talked to John, he said, help, ba, 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 ba. <laughs> and, and then we went through the, the solution is the three-step process. And then if John were here, he would tell. Now, the success is always in the other person's words, the happy customer. I would not have believed it possible that within four months, we could have increased sales 5% with less sales professionals and no project was over budget or whatever it was. But so it's situation and success, the happy customer. The solution in the middle is what we did that could work very well for you. And when you know very well, okay, that I could not say about me what you said about me. Right. And that's why I say you are taking your happy, satisfied clients with you when they say, I would not have believed it possible. And this is a couple of weeks ago, I delivered a sales presentation skills training. And in January, it's the tr their turn to deliver presentation based on my success for coaching. And part of my process was not only interviewing the salespeople and what they now say, I interviewed three of their customers. And I asked them, would you be happy if the sales professionals of this company used you as an example? No, of course not. And I said, has anyone ever asked you? They said no. And what I did is I took the transcript of what the customer said and I tweaked it slightly to fit in my formula because I, of course, asked them to tell me their story in the formula. Now, before you met Jesse, what was your situation? And I even say, do you think it was a good investment? 
and one said to me, oh, my chief financial officer wouldn't want me to say this, but yes, it's very fairly priced for the quality <laughs> that we get. It's So this would be a fripper size. I know people don't like homework, so this is a fripper size. <laughs> Make a list of, of all your happy clients. And you might want to call and first of all, leave a voicemail. So call at the end of the day because you want to be the most interesting voicemail when they get their messages the next day. And you say, John, I never get tired of telling the story about how thrilled you were after we finished such and such a project. Would you mind if we had a quick conversation and you tell me in your words what your situation was when we first began this project and what would you say now that you've lived with the product, the software, the service, whatever, uh, 18 months later? And if it's okay, I'd like to just use it in my sales conversations. So just let me know when it's a good time to call. We'll only need five to 10 minutes. And with your permission, I'll record the conversation and I will send you back what we will say that you, that you said before we use it. For the approval. That is so much more powerful than saying, oh yeah, ABC couldn't believe the results they got. It's for you to put it in their own words and quote them as if they are speaking in, like you said, the before, during, and after formula of showing and proving those results, but in the words of the customer is so powerful. I love Here, that. Here's a technique that I used when I was interviewing the three customers for my client. And I just want them to talk and they talk. And then I say, would it be true to say, and I summarized what they said to shorter and tighter and perhaps a, add a dramatic adjective. Mm. So is it true to say, oh, yes, and I promise you, they, your happy customers will rave about you better than if you wrote your own endorsement. That's right. And then, like you said, you could take what they say and maybe spice yeah. it up a little bit, but yeah. say, well, is, is this true? true? Is it true to say? Because some, yeah. You say, do you have any statistics to prove that? Oh, yeah, we did this at this. So, so, and how many of your customers did you research? So is it true to say that 72% of your customers in your yearly survey reported that? And that was because as a result of doing business with this company? Oh my gosh. Talk about getting powerful information that you can use and share with other clients and get more sales. That is the name of the game, right? Um. Patricia, <laughs> I'm blown away by all this value that you have delivered. I know to you listeners, let's put these skills to work because Patricia, honestly, she's one of the best on the planet, probably the best on the planet. And uh, may I put that on my website? <laughs> yes. Yeah, see, there you go. You've got a quote, according to Kay Miller, famous author and uh, wife of Steve Miller. <laughs> yes, you can put that on your website for sure, but you've got tons, so many accolades. And I just want to throw in too that you were the first woman ever to be president of the National Speakers Association. And of course, I call myself Muffler Mama. I was the first in several positions and that was a big deal. What year was that? 84, 85. Okay, so... A few years ago, you were and are a trailblazer. And uh, thank you so much for being on the podcast. And you listening, if you want Patricia Fripp to help you create and deliver presentations that drive more sales, you got a little taste and appetizer today, go to Fripp.com. You can find out about all her services, including her FrippVT.com, which is an online learning platform, and it's just very digestible, easy to learn, great tips. You can learn at your own pace. It, it's just awesome. So I am going to ask you, Patricia, do you have one final thought? 
where I hope my final thought and comment will be in 30 or 40 years. <laughs> However, my concluding thought is to be successful, don't celebrate closing a sale. Celebrate opening a relationship. I love that. That's a great note to end on. Uh, Patricia, again, thank you so much for being on the podcast. My pleasure. Thanks for listening to this episode of Uncopyable Women in Sales, your source for secrets you can use to make more sales. Check the show notes for links and contact information. And if you enjoyed the podcast, please spread the word by subscribing, sharing, and leaving a five-star review. You can always learn more by going to uncopyablesales.com slash podcast. Until next time, go out and supercharge your sales like a true uncopyable rock star. <laughs>